o'clock. Call the meeting to order. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. In case anybody's on, um, unfortunately, Mr. Simus had an emergency and will not be attending tonight. Do I hear a motion to move into executive session? I move that the select board vote to enter executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 214, Section 1B, and Mass, and Mass General Law Chapter 4, Section 7, Clause 220-26C, to discuss financial assistance to residents in need in Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, Subsection three, respect to collective bargaining if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of public body. And the chair so declares Teamsters Union local DPW roll call vote. I second motion, Laura have I. Maureen Dornell, I, and the board will reconvene an open session. So the uh, of a memorandum of agreement with the Department of Public Works Unions. I move that the select board vote to execute a memorandum of understanding MOU with the Department of Public Works Supervisors Teams the Union Local 170 and Department of Public Works hourly employees and direct staff to finalize contracts for execution. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Marlene Donnell. Aye. Laura Hebb. Unanimous. Okay. Yeah. And Dennis, you're up again on two uh, town meeting articles. Yes. So we talked about them during the last meeting. Okay. Uh, but we did not have dollar amounts at that time. So okay. it seemed only prudent that we just breeze through them again and talk about actual funding associated. With okay. It. So as a refresher, this is for the first one is for um, continuing our engineering services with time bond for finalizing the design of water and wastewater infrastructure in the pump station planning. If you recall, we had a $275,000 grant which funded the majority of the contract. Unfortunately, when we executed the contract, we did not know where the pump station location was going to be, and we did not know what the permit fees and mass dots fees were going to include. So the original contract was only to bring us to the 90% design stage, okay. and that's what the 207 files. The money that this article is asking for brings us the rest of the way and includes the pump station and final negotiations with mass dot and all their permits. And it's a total of $62,000. So I'm asking for $31,000 out of each of the retained earnings, one from water, one from soap. Good. Works for me. And then the second one was in regards to our latest NIPTES permit for our wastewater treatment plan, identified two um, requirements in our sanitary survey that we recently had. One of them was to do an uh, operation and maintenance manual update for our wastewater treatment plant, which we did our original in the 90s. And then we had a slight amendment to it in 2015. Otherwise, it remains unchanged. So that is required by DEP to be updated using today's standards and requirements. And the second part is what's called a CMOP, which is a capital management operation maintenance for the entire system. So that includes all the infrastructure, all the pump stations, your staffing plan, your rates, everything goes into that and it's required in the new NIPTES permit. We don't have one of those. So, uh, we, I asked for an extension of time for what they allotted and they granted it. Um, so the total cost for the two in the article I'm asking for, I have it somewhere, $95,000. So that's strictly out of wastewater containing earnings. There is a contingency built into that. Um, because this is 
and we're starting from scratch with this one. So I didn't build a contingency into the 62,000 because we're just about to cross the finish. So all of our costs are fixed and we know what they are. There's no surprises. This one we're starting with scratch. So when they get involved into the evaluation of all of our infrastructure and pump stations and everything they're going to do, I put a contingency on we normally 15% and everything. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And I do believe that's it. You are free to go. Have a wonderful yeah. day. Excuse me, Mr. Flaherty's going to make you sit. Wait a minute, then. I, I guess I asked either Mr. You know, good friend, Mr. Westgate, tell me in. Since we move this aspect of the town's capital plan, this is not in the capital plan because it was just identified in our new permit that came up. Will it be, will that stand alone or is that going to be part of the capital, capital plan? Um, no, I don't believe so because that's the, <laughs> the development of the operation maintenance plan um, and then sticking to it. I mean, there may be things that we have to improve, but those items should already be identified in our capital assessment. Yeah. So any, any capital that we would be required that's already documented is in our capital plan for replacing pumps, doing work to clarifiers, all that kind of stuff. This document goes through and identifies the whole operation and maintenance of every single piece of equipment that has to do with our wastewater treatment plant, pump stations, and all the infrastructure. <clears throat> so it's a document, a really big document. So that document is telling you X number of years, but if you get to do this, so if you get to do that. What that document does is that identifies all the pumps that we have, the brands that they are, the horsepower they have, how often they're supposed to be serviced, when their life expectancy is, and all the way to personnel. The but thank you. The capital plan be done for that. Yes. Thank you, sir. You always say you answer my question as always. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Have a great night. So next would be the Hero Veterans Act property tax exemption. Val and Pat. Welcome. Thanks. Appreciate you coming. Yeah, you will go flying backwards. You should sit up here more often. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so these are the details of the Hero Act, and after we come up with some options, and we wanted to present them to you. Okay. And it starts with the first page. Is the options are the current what they are the projections. First is the current cost. Second is option A which in, we could increase it $500 for the 100% disabled veterans and $200 for the 10% to 90% disabled veterans. Option B would be to increase it $1,000 for the 100% disabled veterans and $400 for the 10 to 90% disabled veterans. Option C would be increase with the annual COLA adjustment. This year, that's 3.2% from the state. And it should be noted that option C is consistent with our Clause 41C Senior Exemption and Senior Work Off Program. We do increase the amounts for the eligibility based on the COLA that's presented, with, that's given every year from the state. And we have some do, um, Division of Local Services um, press releases. I'm just going from the question that we, that we both asked before. With the addition of the HERO Act, um, it allows towns to do what they want to do up to 100% of the state mandated uh, exemptions. State mandated exemptions are $1,000 if you're 100% disabled or $400 if you're 90 or less. So as a board, finance committee, town manager, whatever your structure you want to do, you can give a $10 raise to that thing if you wanted to. So I am the veterans agent here in Hopedale, 
I live in Sutton. I'm on the finance committee in Sutton, so I'm very uh, on my camp. I'm you know I'm I'm involved in this, and I did some work with Douglas and with Uxbridge in helping them do it. So I can tell you it's all over the lot as to what uh, who who's doing what. Okay, but it's and so it, it's however the charter for the town is written, uh, and I do believe if I and I tried to look at it quickly, and I'll stand corrected. Uh, defer to you. I believe that uh, if you do something, it has to go to a town vote. I believe that's how your charter is written. Some towns, you know, like Framingham, you know, they're, you know, they have a mayor, and so they, their, their council or whatever it's called, could, could do it. If you want the extreme, if you were in Limister, Limister is planning on doing to double it to 2,800 plus the COA. Uh, uh, I'm, I don't want to say I'm conservative, but I do sit on a finance committee, and I my question to their mayor up there is, <clears throat> "Wow, you guys must have a lot of money." Uh, but and that's it. so. The examples that Val and I put together were is, is that what is the town currently paying? And so, if you look at it, the total exemptions, if you look at the very first sheet, are twenty five thousand eight hundred dollars, of which the state is reimbursing seventeen nine twenty five. So the cost of the town is 78.75. That's today, okay? So as, as Val walks you through the other ones here, you'll see the increase, excuse me, the state reimbursement does not change. So anything additional that the town should, should do, whatever you decide is, it's gonna cost the town. You're not gonna get any reimbursement from the state for that. And I think that was some confusion when we spoke to you a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And one last thing, and I'll go back to Val. We do have we have four people who the veteran died from a service-connected disability. And those folks get a hundred percent abatement or an exemption, but the state reimburses a hundred percent of that. So they're not in the equation at all. That kept coming up from Brett. Last time I Those think we were Sarah Widows, correct? Is that what they call them? Yeah, no, both stars you have to die in the line of duty. Oh, okay. And uh, I don't think I don't think we have any gold star. Okay, because I have a friend that's a gold star and her husband it, it was service related, but it was absolutely service related is not uh it, it, so it, I, I just get a heart attack after you your home and you had a hundred percent disability because of your heart condition. That does not make you a gold star. <laughs> you need to be killed uh, in the you know, killed in the line of duty. I don't want to. I don't want to confuse this because we no, promised to keep to, 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 to keep it keep it simple. So the first page, and then I'm giving back to Val. It's currently costing the town seventy eight seventy five, and so we tried to give you some other examples. See what you want to say. And my last thing is, okay, in Sutton, we're not going to vote on this until our May meeting. Uh, we have a town manager who's retiring, and uh, so we just made the decision, because that's when we do all the money things anyway. We're, uh, some towns are trying to rush it through right now, but uh, we're not that you have to do what Sutton's doing, but that's... No, no, I, I think it makes sense. It, it can't be implemented until 2026, so to me, it makes more sense to wait till town meeting, but because it's fresh in our minds, I think, I if I'm wrong, but we wanted to continue, so we understood this. Yeah. Because in two months we'll be planning for absolutely. You absolutely. know, as you know, it, it comes quick. So now I'll I'll shut up here. So the first page was what it costs us right now. Okay. Option A is the first section, and option A would increase um, the. This is an example. We would increase our thousand dollar exemption for those thirteen bedrooms to fifteen hundred dollars, and then. It would cost the town $6,500 to do that for those 13 veterans. 32 veterans are 10 to 90%. If we increase that exemption to $600, it would cost $6,400. If we implemented this program, it would cost $12,900. That would what would come out of the overlay. We would get reimbursed. With the reimbursement stands the same at $17,925. So, option B is increase 
the amount 100%. So $1,000 would become $2,000 for the 13 veterans that have 100% disability. That would cost $13,000. For the other 32 veterans, if we doubled it to $800, it would cost $12,800. If we implemented this program, doubling it, it would cost out of the overlay $25,800. That's going to all the way up. Then option C is based on the current COLA. So, and next year was going to increase. So, but this year it's 322%. That would add an additional $32 to the $1,000 exemption. It would cost $416 out of the overlay. And then for the other 32 veterans, it's only $12.80, and that would cost $410. And a total, if you implemented that program, would be $826 out of the overall. It is good to note that you can do both option C, the COLA, along with option A. You can mix the two together, but we didn't come up with a scenario because that would be too confusing, but you can vote in both. Um, you can't, once you do, if you don't do option B too, you can do B and the COLA. That's 100% on the COLA, uh, and that, that would be a tremendous amount of money. So, but we didn't give that example because that's it, it, a lot. And those are the examples that we wanted to present to you so that you had a good understanding of what the Fair Act allows us to do, potentially voting for this leader 2026 or going forward. There are a number of other things that came in the HERO Act, but none of them uh, are financial to the town. It, 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 it changes the definition of a veteran. It, there are some mental health things and all that. So, I mean, it, it's, it's good for veterans. And well, I, we can give you a list if you, if you need, need any of that. I mean, I handle it as your veteran, veteran's agent. The other thing which is good, which is no cost to the town, is just work for that, okay? Which is that if you are 100, if the veteran, not, the, not a veteran's spouse, but if you are the veteran and you are 100% you, and you own an automobile, then you are exempt from the excise tax on one automobile. And uh, but you are the town will be reimbursed 100%. Okay, that's our story. I appreciate it. it, it clarified it, makes it the chart is great. We like visuals. So I'll work with, uh, with Jim uh, for any other question, or so will Val for any other questions. You have. I call you Jim, I'm thinking of Jim Smith. I apologize, Joe. Both starts with a J. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's okay, it's late. Uh, I'll start with my tongue back in my mouth. I'll, I'll work with this guy over here. Yeah, that works. <laughs> for anything additional they may need for the, for the finance committee as you, as you move forward. Thank you for the We time. appreciate your help and your time. Thank you very much for Thanks coming for tonight. No, oh, we're at the town manager's report. Hey. Right. It's yeah, it's vacant, Steve. You want you want to enjoy some fond memories? <laughs> okay, so um, uh, just wanted to remind uh, remind people that back on September fifth, we held a public informational session at the community center for the community choice power supply. Um, about 20 people attended, and uh, the video is up on the town's YouTube channel on my town manager report. I have a link for that. Uh, so uh, that is going to be going into effect tomorrow, and we're going to be pushing out through social media on the town's website as well as posted at the community center. Um, there is a public notice that the state also requires we put out. So should people have any other uh, questions, Canceling that out. Um, uh, let me know and uh, we can try to answer your questions.
Also wanted to give the board and the town an update on the police chief search. Uh, deadline for resumes for the chief position is this Friday. Uh, so the town is utilizing the services of public safety consultants. Um, I've started working with them to schedule interviews with stakeholders as well as set the date for initial meeting. Again, the timeline is basically having uh, the month of September into the beginning of October to sort of do some of the initial meetings, assessment center middle of October with coming in at the end of October to presenting uh, a uh, candidate for the board to uh, ratify. Uh, special town meeting warrant is closed in the board's pack and for discussion later on tonight is uh, that draft warrant. Uh, the presentations of articles are already asked uh, department heads to attend the board's October 1st meeting so they can go over their requests and the board can vote on final articles and insert any that may be needed. Uh, the town meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, November 12th at Nimock High School Auditorium. Uh, Route 140 paving project. This is different than the TIP project. This is different than the Culvert project. This is different than our MassWorks project. Uh, this paving project, which is being done by the state, starts at the Grafton, uh, uh, starts in Grafton at their library, continues through uh, Upton, stops at William Street, basically passes over, skips over the uh, TIP project, and then uh, coming up uh, by where we have Governor's Landing, it will pick back up and they go all the way into Hopedale. Uh, this Friday, they have a pre-construction conference. Uh, Dennis uh, with DPW will be attending as well as our engineers because there are some coordination issues with our MassWorks project uh, that they do need to discuss. Uh, this project has been given the go-ahead to uh, proceed and construction is uh, imminent. Um, so in a couple of weeks, we'll probably start seeing uh, trucks. Whether or not it actually starts anytime soon in Upton is something that Dennis will find out because I'm anticipating that it's either starting in Crafton or starting in Hopedale and coming this way. Uh, DPW was also at a construction meeting this morning uh, at the Grafton Upton Railroad. The board may recall uh, authorizing spending about $58,000 to do engineering of a sewer line uh, that is ours that goes within the Grafton Upton Rail Yard. Uh, this was an agreement where if we did the engineering, they would do the construction. So they're starting their construction the first week of October. This is going to address a major amount of infill water that's entering into our treatment system and address some of the capital uh, items uh, with the wastewater treatment uh, division of DBW for addressing what's called INI. Also, uh, I executed the contract with the roadway line painting company uh, and they're going to be starting next week. They're going to be doing some of the uh, lines like at the paving that was done on Pleasant and at the intersection of Maple. Mm -hmm. And they're also going to be doing the cemetery parking lot. The Upton Apartments 40B appeal period has ended. Uh, no appeals were filed with the town clerk. Um, that, that, um, had, that appeal period ended last week. Town clerk uh, wants to give everyone a heads up. Early voting is going to be starting on Saturday, October 19th, and it's going to continue for two weeks. The last day of early vo voting will be November 1st. Uh, early voting is at Town Hall in the main hall. The, the Elder and Social Services uh, Department and the Council on Aging will be holding an informational meeting on Thursday, September 26th for a Friends of Upton Elders um, Friends Group. So many towns have Friends of the COA as basically a uh, organization that supports the operations of a COA. They're a char charitable organization. They do a lot of fundraising since town COAs can't do fundraising, uh, but they really work hand in hand um, very often raising funds that then help uh, COAs and um, departments such as ours runs program for the seniors. Uh, just an update, um, uh, Upton continues to be identified as moderate risk community for Triple E and low risk for West Nile virus. 
Northbridge is still identified as a high risk community for Tripoli and Grafton is identified as moderate risk community for West Nile. Reiterating from last month, um, uh, state recommends uh, people use mosquito repellent um, with, with uh, EPA registered active ingredients uh, and clothing to reduce exposure to the skin. Uh, mosquitoes most likely spread uh, Tripoli during the hours of dusk and dawn. And just want to let the board and community know about upcoming events. On Friday, September 20th at 5 p.m. in the community center, the Optins Men's Club is holding their monthly senior dinner. Uh, I mentioned about the September 26th meeting with uh, informational session for Friends of Upland Elders. On Saturday, September 28th, uh, we have Heritage Day from 9 to 2 on the Town Common. Senior Center uh, Elder and Social Services Department is holding a What's New with Joint Replacements on Monday, September 30th, uh, talking about technologies for knee and hip replacements. Uh, Senator Fatman's office continues to have monthly office hours. The next one is scheduled for Wednesday, October 2nd from 9 to 10. And lastly, the first Friday uh, is uh, my monthly coffee with the town manager at the community center. And uh, this month's guest on October 4th is going to be Valerie Leonardo. Our assessor is going to talk about senior and veteran exemptions. I had a question, Joe, when they uh, restrike the community center. Yes. Will it be done at night or will they be closing portions of it or how? How is that going to work? Uh, we're going to notify and close a portion of the parking lot. Um, you know, we're we're paving right in front of the community center. We're going to be putting in uh, fire lanes, no parking, changing directions. So uh, we're trying to coordinate with um, all involved as far as to reduce the the impacts for that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, do we have any public input? From anyone. It's some things that is pertaining to an agenda and later. So I assume you want to be. Yes, please. Thank you. I think so. Okay, so this I'm going to um, step into a resident's role. I stay right here. Sure. Speak loudly. I love it. Can you chair your name, please? Please. Lynn Haggerty through the chair. Um, excuse me. Address. Um, Susan O. Side Mill Lane, Upton. Thank you. Um, so I had, uh, looking around the community, we used to put up festive trees, we used to put up flags, this type of thing, but I concentrated on just wreaths. So I sent uh, the town manager a proposal um, that I had done some research on what it would cost to put a five foot wreath here, a six foot wreath there, the municipal buildings. And so I'm just bringing it up for the board's consideration. I really think that uh, I, our community would benefit from it. The last couple of years, we haven't really had any a wreath on the building or, you know, anything or any of the other buildings. So if you consider it, I appreciate it. Joe can give you the subject and if there's anything else you'd like me to resource and you know, come up with fun with numbers. I will. So Dick Dunmore Christmas, right? I'm talking about the holiday. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm talking about the holiday. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. On the discussion on October 1st, Brett also inquired about another um, project, the beautification funds okay. uh, that would like to bring from the board on October 1st. Okay. Thank you. And now we have our joint meeting with the trust fund commission. Um, could you both introduce yourself to Sue, please? Don't go sliding backwards, Steve. It's not <laughs> local. That's not what I'm saying. Get away from well, the order of experience or order of rank. How are we introducing ourselves? Because I think he should be. <laughs> Mr. Fleming. Before East Street. Thank you. All right. Stephen Metallion, 161 South Street. Thank you. 
Lynn Haggerty again, 10 Sagamon Lane. So we called you here because um, as we were um, going to the scholarships this year, um, I don't know if anything's been updated. I don't know what the funds are. Um, we couldn't remember if there were specific conditions set for both Gary Bates and the Ramsey scholarship. Um, for example, when we do the Bloomer Girl scholarships, um, we we look at financial need. We look at we do a technical scholarship. We do an academic scholarship. So I can't remember, and I don't know if it's been lost through the years. If there was anything specific tied to those scholarships, and also are they still funded? Are, are they still viable? And some of those are my questions. So, um, and Maureen has already proved earlier tonight that I am horrific at math, although I'm excellent at money. Um, so I will probably let her take it because my eyes will glaze over and I will, well, it's Gary not Bates, my forte. <laughs> the Gary Bates fund is set up that they would have one $200 scholarship given out at the each year. And that at the end of the, the funds, it's not a non-expendable or an expendable fund. Everything's expendable in that fund. That it would close out or if somebody, residents wanted to donate money into the fund, they could do it. Now, I don't know where the Gary Bates fund is. It said it was balanced forward at 7123 was 127.92. The interest income on it was 113.62, and I don't know if there's any even any money in the fund. So yeah. how do we come up with the interest? We had uh, a discussion about this. Um, one of the items that was brought to my attention, uh, Mr. Fleming noticed this is not all of the funds that are shown on this spreadsheet. Not all of them are shown to have a non-expendable portion and an expendable portion. Now, with respect to the Gary Bates Scholarship, it's actually a different fund number. So I'm seeing it as 8404, Gary Funds, uh, Gary Bates Scholarship, a balance forward of $1,621.80. And I believe this file was generated by, uh, Joe, I don't know if you forwarded this. Yes, yes I forwarded it from Kenny Costa. Okay. So that's what I'm thinking. But that was, that's the base. That's the uh, so-called non-spendable is what was transferred, 1600. Yes, 162180. Now the non-expendable accrues the interest, and that transfers to the expendable. But the expendable, because of boundary, also accrues the interest. So how much my how much interest is coming from the non-expendable? Making up what's in the expendable. Uh, in looking at this, it's quite evident. First of all, I need to step back a ways. When a lot of the documents were scanned by the town, some of the original documentation is misplaced. We can't find it. Uh, previously, over a year ago, we started looking, we went through all the files downstairs with the town clerk, <clears throat> unable to find any paper document. As far as scan document doesn't exist even. So I'll use the Ramsey Scholarship as an example. When the Ramsey Scholarship was written, it did not stipulate um, a uh, what's the word and non-expendable. So actually, all the monies in the account are liquid, and I think that's why it shows in here. If you on the documents under the non-expendable, it's not even listed. But under the expendable, it shows the full amount of six thousand some one dollars. So then they sh that should not be given any of the non-expendable interest. It should only be earn earning the interest on its own in the expendable. Correct. Right. Right. There is no non-expendable component. Okay. Correct. So, so what what makes it difficult, and I can understand your predicament, you want to award within the parameters of the trust or the scholarship. And you want to abide by the monies that are there. Yes. Um, unfortunately, again, with some documents gone, I mean, I'll be candid. I wrote the Ramsey Scholarship back when Squint passed away. And at that time, it was submitted to the town and voted at the town meeting vote. So I think if we go back and we go back to about that time frame to a town meeting uh, uh, 
annual, annual town, meeting. town meeting and go through the minutes of the documentation that will probably show the language in there. I'm going to ask you, but do you remember what town meeting that was? Oh, sure, I do. <laughs> so you, you broke it. It was a Tuesday night in rains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was, but we could How look at when. Uh, well, because we know when Spring Pass, so it I probably would was within a year. If I took it, I would say it was about 1990, 1989, yeah. 1990. And it would be within that time frame the town meeting accepted it. Now, all, all, um, all funds have to be accepted at the town meeting, yes, correct? Yes. So, we could go back to um, all the old town meetings, but I don't know. I don't think a lot of us were around. Well, Laura, we look at some of the names and remember the family names, but yeah, if that's we all. to the 40s and Sundays, so it would be difficult. But um, I, there's another avenue which is costly, and that would be to go through the state to the register and have the probate. It. Or we go through and have them see what's in the files, and I don't know what that would entail. And some of these, you know, we fool them because the amounts in them are so small. But, you know, they are still, somebody took the initiative to donate that trust to the town. So that's kind of the dilemma we're in. I mean, prior to one of our meetings, maybe two months ago, I had gone downstairs at the clerk's office. Just randomly pulled out a book from 1954-1955 annual town meeting, and there's discussion in there about trusts. So I forget which one it was. It was one of the library trusts. So that particular one was set up back then. And I happened to be in Milford the other day and drove past in a bank that we used to use. It was Milford National Bank and Trust Company. So I think back in those days, trusts may have been set up at local lending institutions, but maybe they're on file in Worcester. You know, I, I would assume those trusts would be somehow reported in Worcester County Registry of Deeds, I'm thinking. But again, <clears throat> you know, I guess we'd, I would say we want to narrow it down to what you want to look at and then see who I think the wants to be proactive and try to really. If you were looking for trusts and they were in wills, I would wonder if um, the probate court has a scannable database. You know, um, that might be the simplest solution if they scan their records in and we could put, put, for example, Gary Bates and pull up the will, or pull up the trust. That might be the easiest. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's I don't know what's possible, um, right. but I do know everybody has scanned everything. But like, say, Bob, sometimes documents get lost and they don't get scanned well, as they, they are potentially lost forever, or they're sitting misfiled in a box somewhere that never to be found again. And some of the language within the trust of goods, as Gary Bates does exist, we do have copies, but the language is a little ambivalent. It, it basically says it shall be awarded by the selectmen and six citizens at large. Well, yes. Kind of big. Six citizens. How, how are they elected? Pick, chosen? Um, you know. So there's some interpretation there too, right? Yeah, Henry, yeah. Excuse me. You can see though, you know, you look at the trouble that we have just filling regular seats at regular committees. So if you get into a situation where yeah, this was this was great, public participation was great back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, but you know, we see that's not the case today. So you can imagine trying to draw together six residents at large to sit in on a scholarship committee to award a two hundred and fifty dollars option, or whatever the situation may be, maybe it's five hundred. But it would be almost impossible. And um, yeah, what we found too is the reason we're having you come before us now is we want to move our scholarship applications closer to January so that they can be be presented. Because now you know Valley Tech and Nipmunk present much earlier in the year. They have an awards night, and we have our deadlines are beyond that, so it's not being mentioned. So did have a great turnout this year. We had 18 applications, yeah. which was amazing. Last year, I think we had three. Um, you know, as you know, both having sat on the board, it's there's no rhyme or reason. But if we can at least get these announced, then someone with a younger sibling would be sitting there going, "Oh, I could do that." Um, but I also want to make sure we have the funds to distribute. And I have, it's not 
And if go ahead. Do it, it's, oh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we'll go back to the interest on your non expendable trust funds. Each one earns its own interest. And then it's supposed to be forwarded to the designated fund on the other side. Do we know what the formula is that's being used to transfer this interest? Is it one lump sum and then they take and figure out the percentages and all of that? I have no idea. If that's what I would assume would be the process, right? If you have one account with 100,000, another with 2,000, and yeah, you're right. right. You're going to break that down into percentages. I mean, the, the non-expendable is easy because each one individually earns it all, its own interest. It's when it gets transferred over, then you yes. have a lump sum on this side. How do you, I don't know what the formula is. Okay. There is just one other number here I'll share with you. I don't know if you have it in front of you, but uh, with respect to that, it shows $147.33 is the current year interest income. So, how that was broken out again that's on the non-extendable side so that one third uh, 147.33 is then going to transfer over to the expendable side right uh, and then but, you have the expendable side uh, that exists and earns its own interest yes. and how is that broken out within the fund there are full accounts because there are, let's pick a number 12, that are small amounts. I won't say insignificant, but smaller amounts. Those are invested as one entity and they get a return. And that return is then divided out as a percentage of the earnings to the base amount. And, and, the that's, yeah, and that's how those come. Um, because for accounting purposes, the cost of accounting each line item over and over is. I mean, you're talking about $147 interest. It's more cost to account than it is the earnings. So, but there are pooled accounts that are in here, but they subdivide <laughs> the spread out accounts. So for investment purposes, they are invested as a multi yeah. pool, correct. And then if let's say combined, they all earn $10,000. Well, that's a percentage of what was the base and it all gets allocated out proportionally. Yeah. And the larger ones, the non-expendable larger ones, individually could get their interest and transfer it. Right. But then we get a lump on everything, all the pooled accounts and all the expendable side, which is the interest. How do, how does that how is that broken down? Is it broken down individually by each account? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get the question correct. My phone. Uh, on the expendable side, it's a lump sum. And I mean, it, what is the formula that is used to break that all down? Into percentages, same well, thing, or, or? Well, are you talking the pool accounts or the individual? Uh, individual. Each individual account is invested independently on its own. So if, if I could use as an example, the concept page. Well, that's a bad one. Um, I could use the William Noble Trust Fund. That's independently invested on its own under William Noble Trust. They, Both on the non expendable and the expendable? Well, the expendables were the, the non expendable, the initial investment. The expendable is obviously the revenues from. Sometimes we, in the larger trust, we will reallocate so that we stay consistent with our uh, base plan of allocation. Um, as with the larger ones, like last year we had a, an outstanding earnings. We earned 14% on the trust, which in that market was very significant. But is it 14% across every one? Not necessarily because different markets we invest in. Um, you know, I'd almost have to sit down with you. You would have to show you the whole, this is where all the monies are allocated. And, I mean, I, give you a copy. Well, I, I, I mean, I see the allocation, but I don't know how to write it down. Yes, yeah. yeah. I could give you this. This is the last one that shows how the funds have been out in this. You have that? Sure. We'll set. Yeah. yeah. So just for everyone else, it's only a dollar. Thank you, Bob. Um, so again, getting back to what he was saying, there's a there's a, a series of investments that are taking place with those dollars. So we may have T. 
T. Rowe Price Institutional Floating Rate Fund. There's also a uh, PIMCO in fund. There's a Lord Abbott Short Duration Income Fund, Thornburg Strategic Income Fund. So again, these monies are invested. You know, we have a professional work. Now, are they all invested in the legal funds set forth by the state? Um, the what? The legal funds, what they call legal funds. That I couldn't answer. I, I don't have to. All the funds that we invest in are certified, recognized. There is no, no risk whatsoever. As a matter of fact, we lean to the conservative side of the allocation funds, which I would call more conservative because we're entrusted with town money. You know, it'd be easy to say, oh, the stocks can go up and invest in it and then does one of these. So um, I think that book will give you a good yeah, I'd like to look at the it, allocation right? plan, where the earnings are derived from. Well, where, and they give the names of the funds. But yes. Better, yes. So yep. Yep. I can check yep. on the legal. Both international, it. domestic. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's, and it, it's proven to be. Not internet, don't tell me. What? It's not invested internet. There is international investment. We internationally, yes, you'll see it in. If I think it's an international bond fund, um, they're international investments. That's yeah. That's part of the the package is broken out so that there are no funds. Let's just say it's well diverse, so that there are no funds of one too much in any one entity. And international marketing is a big component of investment. So I know it is, but and I, I'll go back and see if they've updated all the things about the uh, legal accounts, legal investments. State always had a list of companies that you could invest in oh, okay. because they didn't want to put anything at risk, mm -hmm. and you had to stay within that legal. But through the years, I know I know they have opened it up to other investments. Where do you think you would find that information? Who would actually post that? Department of Revenue. Pardon? Department of Revenue. Department of Revenue. Yeah. I'd be very curious to see what they post, well, if anything. Yeah. You know, I'll I don't know if that, you know, with the state and with their modern municipal plans, you know, you just wonder if they still follow that guideline. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I've been out of it for a while, so I, I know, mm -hmm. but I know they've updated. But getting back to an earlier statement that you had asked, or question that you had asked, the pooled accounts, again, it's it's your collapsing numbers and then we're pulling numbers back apart, right? So essentially those numbers are going to get pulled back apart downstairs with the yeah. finance director. Yeah. Right? Because we're seeing it as a pooled number. So it's coming back as a pooled number plus interest. How it gets pulled apart is done internally, you know, in this building. Okay. Thank you. This has been very helpful. Last thing I'd like to say, and I think sure. they should be recognized. We are very fortunate because RBC Wealth Management, the gentleman that works with us, started out as an employee. He's now executive vice president of the company, but he doesn't want to leave up in the relationship he's had. So um, they have been excellent to work with. They they've worked with both the town manager and um, you know the town of Upton through its total. Whatever the concern is, they jump in and get helpful. Very good company. Yeah, yeah we had an accounting issue. Uh, we knew about this one about nine, ten months ago, where the accounting discrepancy was picked up by our investment specialist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, there's, and again, it's just it's money in a column. It really speaks to what your question was. Exactly what your question was, which is, you know, if money's supposed to come out of this account and come over here, and for some reason it doesn't get uh, right. Categorizing the correct account, right. who's going to catch it? Well, we were very fortunate. Yeah. Uh, Paul McDonough found the problem. That's he he that's solved that issue. Out. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was one. Yeah, that was one for certain. That we we all had experience with that one. So, I think our big thing, like I said, was ensuring that there's we're not distributing funds that don't exist. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, and it has been so long. I mean, I called a couple of baits, and they were like. <laughs> You know, I, 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 I need to talk to a few more. I, I, it came up the night before we were going to present them. And I actually called Donna because we were little girls together. And she said, call Jimmy Sr. Um, she thought maybe Duke or your brother would know, but she wasn't sure. So, um, but she said, 
skinny senior probably would, but I didn't get the job. Um, you know, but that's what got me thinking, well, John, I can't remember, and Dookie can't remember. Um, is there any money left? <laughs> That's probably, we estimated it to be like 1974. Yeah. So, and that was 50 years ago. It, it, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So. But you bring up a good point about the, the important thing is awarding the scholarships early enough. So, as you mentioned, the kids, not only do the kids want to get the recognition that they earn those scholarships, but the town of Upton should get that recognition. Exactly. And ultimately, the people that set up the scholarships. Exactly. So that's all getting sidestepped, you know, in, in your. It is, but we need we need to move our our deadlines up earlier, much earlier this year. Um, I don't think they had them for graduation. No, they weren't they weren't posted in the graduation either because we didn't get them done early enough. So, um, you know, attended graduation and they they weren't you know there was a list of scholarships the kid had the kids had earned. And these scholarships weren't posted. So we need to up the timeline, which is why I wanted you to come in now, because as we all know, graduation is in three weeks and it seems like it, you know. So, um, but I'd like to really look yeah. at the scholarships in January this year and make the just, you know, have the deadline probably right after February vacation. Um, right now it's after April vacation and we, we can't turn, they present them May 1st. We can't do it. You know, just in case you get the, you know, if they mail them in or email them in, you get the scragglers and, and then for us to review with the two weeks, it, yeah. it just hasn't worked. So, like I said, I personally would like to put the applications out in January, um, even at the end of December. They can look at it over Christmas break and have them do immediately after February vacation so we can get everybody the recognition they deserve. I was going to say, if you have a deadline in January, I think you're really you're going to suffer with the amount of applicants you get. But I think if you get that deadline, we put it towards the end of February vacation. We put it out to the schools either in yeah. December or February. Because too, what happens? I know when my son was my son graduated from Valley Tech in '19, and they have a running list of scholarships. As they get put in, everything else gets bumped down. So if you don't have an ambitious kid that wants to look through 500 different scholarships, because of course, Valley Tech is 13 towns. Some of them are town specific. So if we can get in there early enough, the kids are, you know, you're getting your FAFSA numbers in December. They're, they're thinking about it in December. By February, they're all burned out. They're, they're done looking through the list. Um, and it's pretty much, especially with early acceptance, they've, they're, they're done looking. So I think if we can get it out earlier this year, that's my goal. I think so. All right, well, I mean, as part of the conversation, you have the scholarship policy mm -hmm. in front of you. I think Joe attached it to the meeting packet, or I shouldn't say Joe, but, uh, someone attached it. Uh, but in any event, you know, this may be a good time while you want to take a look at it to evaluate that and update yes. it. Yes, we wanted to get you in and find out where we stood yeah. and get a better understanding of it. Have you nice? seen this one? Which is the Gallery Bay Scholarship? Yeah. No, um, I have not seen it. it. It looks like it's handwritten from here. You're really straining me, Steve. You're a whole big guy. I see. I see black squiggle in the ends on page. <laughs> yeah, I see that. I'll leave this off you and just take a peek at it. I'll get okay. it. Yeah. Oh, good. I have an extra coffee. Yeah. Oh, just that one. <laughs> You can see in a couple of years, it's written in cursive. Um, we all can read it, but in a couple of years, there might be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice time. Yes. Okay, so like, for example, you know, number two, it says, um, for furthering an education, but not specifically college. So if we <clears throat> let people know that that's, you know, you want to go to electrician school, welding school, um, any of that, um, that's huge, mm -hmm. you know, because there, there are, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but there are actually trade schools open. Up. There's an HVAC company that is so far behind. They've opened homes to train people. So, um, because the technical schools are not pushing out kids that don't go to college. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Up but now something like that, those are the kids that really could use the money too. Because there's nothing for them. You know, you go to college, you get this, that, and the other thing. 
Um, you know, I know, for example, my niece was looking at welding school and it's um, $60,000 a year. Wow. And there's no aid. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's. Um, it's a lot. Entertainment. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Extra minute. We're not going to let you on. Okay. So oh, all right. We've got a little something for you. Um, the board has voted to um, approve a mission statement. So we would like to, we'll forward it, understand that it's not on the discussion for this evening, okay. but we'll forward it to uh, Joe and hopefully he'll take a look at it. And we'd like to just include a mission statement on our homepage on the town's website, that's as well as a definition of when the committee or commission was established. I think Very that's a great good. idea. Good idea. I really yeah. do. Well, and that was Jim's idea, I would say, so I don't want to, I want to steal your thunder. <laughs> We work and collaborate to the best outcomes. So, uh, yeah, if you have nothing else for us. No, that's it. Thank you so much. Maureen, that is a fantastic read there. Guarantee. Steve, oh, thank you. This you is. You and I would appreciate you. That, you've Steve. got a call. <laughs> Come to Steve. Call me and let me know what you think. I'd be very curious. <laughs> I have read this, Steve. I will give it back to you, but. In the back of my mind, I thought Gary was trade as well as college, and I couldn't find any document to support it when we were going through. Yeah. So I guess I'm a lot older than people realize. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Do we have a copy of that? I know that I've. You've seen it? Pat. I have them on the server. Okay, that's fine. We're, we're on the has got a stay, so do you want to take some? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Have a <laughs> uh, okay. So the uh, chair of the uh, trust fund, can I make a motion and then we adjourn our incessant meeting? I will. Um, Bob, would you second? We're going to adjourn. Wait, I have oh, a motion to adjourn. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we appreciate it. It was very good. Okay. So we're on to appointments and resignations. Sorry. Thank you, Paul. Do I hear a motion? I move that the select board vote to accept the resignation of David Shenjubak from the Conservation Commission with regrets and thank him for his time that he's put on to the commission. I also appreciate. Um, your service, David, and I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Motion two. That the select board vote to accept the resignation of Jeff Boss from the Technology Committee for the Town of Upton Reps. Also, thank you for becoming part of the Technology Committee. Yes, we appreciate, Jeff, all of your service, and if anyone has any interest, in conservation or technology, we obviously have two open spots. Um, you know, it really is worthwhile to donate your time and get involved. We wish you would. So thank both of them for their service. I, did I make a motion to, did I second that yeah. one? I think I'm good. Okay, sorry. It's getting late. That's my bedtime. We did. Okay. okay. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thanks, so. One of us is paying attention. Um, so now we're on to sale conservation restriction on the Forest Heights land. Thanks, Bill. Could you just introduce yourself to? No, and I have, excuse me, Bill Taylor at 11 Morton Creek. I'm joined here by Lisa Mosinski, who is the president of the Metcom. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Better time is a part of the post. Yes. Sale conservation. Conservation. <laughs> so I prepared a brief presentation. The first page is designed to show you where the property is. Okay. 
uh, and talks a little bit about why we think it's worth conserving. Um, Forest Heights is located off of Moore Street, um, probably about a quarter of a mile past Spike. Um, it's continuous, continuous with over 525 acres of already protected space. Uh, it's mapped by uh, the nat Natural Heritage. Yes. Endangered Species, Endangered Species Program, thank you. Uh, as bio map for habitat, uh, it's also mapped as prime forest habitat, uh, which means it's a good potential for carbon storage and sequestration. Uh, it's the headwater of the Warren Brook and Misto Brook watersheds. Uh, it has a unique wetland of black spruce um, and a highly uh, productive certified wall. Um, the University of Massachusetts Massachusetts characterizes, characterizes it as having a high index of ecological integrity. Um, there's potential for trails linking uh, the other protected open space. Uh, and we hope someday to have the potential to cross over North Street, all the road, West Road Road, and into Upton State Forest. Um, it's within the Misco Warren Whitehall watersheds area of critical environmental concern. And it was a land protection focus area in open space and recreation plan. Huge amount of conservation value, and we think a really good candidate for the grant program. Um, it's a little bit about the Forest Heights land. Um, it's three parcels, totally 107 acres. Uh, there's one parcel that has 160 feet of frontage on the street. Um, there's also an easement uh, runs over 200. North Street land uh, with 50 feet of frontage on North Street. Um, the land came to own it through a tax taking. Uh, rights of redemption were foreclosed in 2019. Um, the care, custody, management, and control were transferred from the treasurer to the select board uh, for general municipal purposes, for the purposes of conservation, and for the purpose of conveyance at the 2021 annual town meeting. Um, it does have some development constraints, uh, fairly limited frontage uh, for access, a highly varied topography. Uh, in fact, uh, the probably the highest point in Upton is located on this property at 650 feet. Uh, but if you look at the topo on the, uh, the first page, you can see there's, there's uh, steep slopes there. Yes. Uh, bedrock outcrops, shallow bedrock, uh, wetland resource areas, and there's a stream crossing. Let me tell you a little bit about the grant. It's a 50% reimbursement grant. Um, and this is unique to this particular grant. Town owned land that is not Article 97, that is permanently protected, uh, may, at the discretion of EEA, which is the Energy of Environmental Affairs, Executive Office of Environmental Affairs, be included in a project to secure Article 97 status. Applicants must justify inclusion of any such parcel that comes directly from grant uh, materials. So the primary purpose of the grant is to create permanently protected forest reserves, which means that timber harvest is prohibited, uh, which is one of the, this is the biggest difference about this, the nature of the grant program. The land, however, must be open to the public for appropriate passive recreational use. And as it turns out, um, at the time of application, the terms for the proposed purchase can be under discussion. So there is some latitude now, or now in terms of whether uh, there's latitude for us to negotiate the terms uh, after the, if we would like to grant, if not a comment, um, The proposed transaction, uh, Metacombat Land Trust will apply for the grant for the purpose of purchasing a conservation restriction for all three parcels. Uh, the value of the conservation restriction will be determined by appraisal. Uh, the land is appraised in 2016 for $585,000. And Metacomet Land Trust will raise the 50% match. Uh, they already have $150,000 in um, pledges. So, uh, so at this point, you don't have a current appraisal. So the best we can do is come up with some assessment of probable so for these purposes of this, we are assuming that the appraised value would be $800,000, that the value of the restricted plan would be $4,000 an acre. So 
that means the value of the conservation restriction is 400,000. And that is what the town will be paid under the way we've mapped this out. Um, there'd be $40,000 in acquisition costs. So the total grant uh, application would be for 440,000. Uh, if that's the case, uh, the 50% grant would pay 220,000 and um, the fund raised by MLT would be 50% of 220,000. <clears> These <throat> numbers are, of course, subject to adjustment depending on how they, the price is. Now, one thing I will say, can't ask for more money after the black grant and it's going to work. You can take less, but you can't ask for more. <laughs> <laughs> so that was who, who does the appraisal? Uh, well, we would hire we someone. Yeah. Yeah, the they have to do the appraisal in such a way that it meets uh, things with DCR's standards. Um, and we've had a lot of experience with appraisers like that, you know, both from NLT and from the town's perspective. Um, so the next step, if the select board is appropriately interested uh, in pursuing the sale of the conservation restriction, uh, another comment will submit a grant application. And, that, and by appropriately, I mean that you think you might do it. Uh, there's a fairly good chance that you might do it if you're not having reached out to me. You can't make that decision this evening. Uh, we would probably have to defer and hope that they offered another grant round with the same opportunity uh, to, to for the town to sell the conservation restriction. When's the deadline for this grant? Uh, it's April, uh, I'm sorry, September 27th at 3. So it doesn't give you much time. No, no, I mean, they announced it on August 24th. It's probably in their ulterior plan. Yeah, so you have uh, to be paying attention. Okay, so what we're hoping is mm -hmm. to go forward is the fact that we were able to get one done by the 27th, uh, that we're competing with fewer applicants and we have a better, better chance of getting. Um, plus, we think this property has all of those positives and will be evaluated very positively uh, by the, the grant in the grant process. I spoke with Matt a comment years ago. But after once it became um, the town and it, they lost the right of redemption, I met with two women from Matt a comment. I thought you were there too. No, I think uh, we met with the board. Uh, with no, I, I was individually. I was trying to see what they what it would be worth. Oh, okay. Without having to develop the whole thing. I mean, they did have a, a, a subdivision plan a way long time. Ago. Yes, very long time. Yeah. But uh, topography, yeah. wetland. Yeah. And it's all tighter now. The I conservation did. restrictions yeah. are much tighter. Yeah, no, I have my first move done. Walk up. <laughs> Billy Goat. <laughs> Um, and my understanding, and I can confirm this, uh, is that the subdivision plan was created in part to demonstrate the number of lots that they could probably get on. I think it was space subdivision. Okay. I think it was 56 or in the cluster. Yep. The, uh, yeah, the open space subdivisions. Uh, and uh, and all, uh, sorry, that comment has done quite a bit of work on Upton already. Uh, there's they represent they, their service areas in 13 communities. Um, and I think they just closed that project. We just bought a conservation restriction with the help of the Commonwealth and several partners um, for $600,000 and to save the farm from, from development. So we were very excited about that. And it's a beautiful piece of property. And this, um, this grant is partly tied to ARPA funds, and the Commonwealth needs to uh, needed to bundle this and put monies together, and they want to create forest reserves. And as you can see on the map, this is a fantastic connector piece to make sure not only that parcel remains to grow old, where the old growth is really more and more important in carbon sequestration today, but that it connects other forested parcels so that you not only have a 
absolutely the same forest, but you have these town and land trust owned parcels to offset that as well. Actually, the property to the south to fund mm -hmm. is uh, owned by Matt Simon and also already conserved as a forest preserve. Yep. We're not losing any taxes either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the unusual situation where you can actually make money. Yes. Preserving Yes. That will be a big selling point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to make sure that comes across. Um, I think it's a wonderful I idea. Care. So I would say, um, I don't know if you need a formal motion to apply for the grant. Um, yeah, I mean, technically the board doesn't need to approve um as under the town managers act mm -hmm. um i'm able to work with them to submit on behalf of the town grants okay. um but having a vote of consensus that you know yes we support this application if that would really help in case they need some sort of verification that the council has taken up some sort of action to submit the grant that would be very, very helpful for our new application okay do i hear a motion to Vote favorably on the grant I application. I vote in favor of the what it's far as heights land acquisition through grants and um, fundraising efforts. So, I'm um, not going to put an amount in there because maybe it will. Yeah, there may be some small yeah. Just want to be clear it's a conservation restriction. You the town yes. is still on them. Yes. Yes. Um, I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming this evening. Okay. Um, next up is the classification and compensation implementation. And Brett wasn't able to be here tonight. He had a family emergency. And something that's important, I'd like to pass over. Um, I know you've, Sandy, I know you're here. Debbie is there, you're here. Um, Brett's emergency came up at the very last minute. I want to thank you, but I don't feel right taking any action without a full board. All right. So um, I'd like to pass over that. So thank you for coming. And we'll put that on the October 1st meeting. Yes. Yes. Hopefully early, because you guys were nice enough to come tonight. All right. I can so with them for a strong let's get your thanks. So the list. <laughs> we get that soon. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so um, the revised Spooky Road Race 5K. That's so, yours. Uh, in the board's packet is a revised application. We had approved this back in June. And um, looking at some of the details, uh, they want to revise the race so that it didn't cross um, uh, Main Street. And they're going back to the route they did last year. Okay. So, and, and police and fire are on board? They're yes. Yep. So, a new board's packet is uh, executed with uh, fire uh, and police as well as my approval. Do I hear a motion? Oh, I move that the select board vote to approve the spooky run 5K road race map as amended and presented by the Menden Upton Education Foundation to be held on Sunday, October 27, 2024 at 10 a.m. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. So now we have the planning board recommendation for discontinuance of a portion of Stoddard Street. Yes, and so at the last meeting, we had uh, forwarded the uh, request for discontinuance, which by statute goes to the, the planning board. They have turned that around uh, very quickly and provided us notice. So according to town council, um, town council had uh, prepared the following motion so we can then have it as part of the record. Um, and it is in your pack. Do I hear a motion? I move that the select board vote to discontinue a portion of Stoddard Street being approximately 16 feet by 61 feet uh, parcel of land in front of 12 Stoddard Street as a public way 
shown as dis discontinuance area on a sketch plan entitled discontinuance plan of A portion of Stoddard Street up to Mass dated August 29, 2024, prepared by HS&T Group Incorporated and that the select board forward the plan to the town clerk and reaffirm, uh, reaffirm the placement of an article for the discontinuance of said parcel as a public way on the November 12, 2024 special town meeting. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Um, next. We did Dennis. So review the draft special town meeting warrant and special town meeting calendar. Okay. So um, I'm going to basically just speak to the uh, memo that uh, is, is here listing out the articles. Um, let me just put it up on the screen as well. Uh, Moon's watching the, the meeting. Uh, so we've had uh, this re represents the uh, final submission of articles that came in um, uh, with the close of the warrant on September 6th. The board had, had previously met on uh, the 3rd. Uh, so we had a couple articles that came in from departments. Um, you know, for example, we have one prior bill for $50 from police. Uh, this is actually from 2023. And I learned something that if, if and it's only T-Mobile that charges this, if you do a ping to verify a location for investigation, they charge you $25 for each ping. So this is two pings, 50 bucks, um, just came to our attention. Interesting. Um, uh, also provided updated uh, dollar figures. Um, we have a uh, police station camera upgrade system for 15,600, police station drone uh, for 10,000, an article from fire for 19,451 for engine three valve repairs, uh, a article which is really amending a 2018 article that approved uh, money for repairs at the fire station, and this would modify it to do other improvements uh, to uh, repair uh, flooring as well as put UV protecting film on the windows. Uh, we've already discussed minivan message board. Uh, the other one that was added on here is a funding under 15, funding for a compost program for 15 hundred dollars uh, and everything else uh, the board had previously seen. So I'm in the process of pulling together a memo to support the, the warrant that has all of the quotes, all of the documents, all of the emails that support that. That will go to the select board as well as the finance committee. Um, and my recommendation would be that we uh, schedule for October 1st time for the department has to come in. So uh, police chief can talk about the drone um, request as well as the uh, the police station camera. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be working with them as well as um, preparing for the board is in the capital plan that staff maintains. We had identified camera improvements for fifty thousand dollars, but that would be here at town hall, police as well as fire. Uh, they have two cameras that are out, and they could either repair for $1,200 or upgrade their system. So in the next two weeks, as we prepare for coming in front of the board, we're gonna narrow some of those down now that we have the final articles um, and um, present you know, whether or not support, bring them forward for everyone for um, special town meeting or holding off on any of those uh, for annual town meeting to be included with our regular capital plan program. We got. Are we going to discuss the um, articles that we're going to close out that Kenny did? Is that going to be on the uh, special town meeting? Uh, so it doesn't need to be on the special town meeting. Only if we were going to um, say, and if we had a bunch of building projects that then we wanted to close out and then use those funds to move into another um, project. project. That's where town meeting action would be needed. If we're basically saying these are done and closed, we don't need town meetings authorization to close that out. I thought that's 
I thought we had to close out the old articles. I'll verify because I'll yeah, I'll verify that. Um, because we identified in the uh, memo that the board received this morning um, about 26 articles, some of them zero. Yeah, some of them one dollar, but there's some that are in the, are a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, that the project is completed, we're able to release those. Um, uh, my understanding from our finance director is that for articles that just are closed out, those funds could be just closed out and it then just rolls into free cash. But mm -hmm. I'll I'll check on that. Yeah, check on. That. Unless the state has changed that too, they all every year there's like um municipal modernization it could have snuck in it could have something. but I'll, I'll verify that. because it definitely doesn't go into free cash mm -hmm. never in my okay. case we'll check that and and if need be then we'll put that on for the first i mean that could be used for the projects correct yep exactly yeah you check that yeah So, and also in talking with the finance committee, uh, one of the finance committee co-chairs, I'd anticipate the finance would post so that they can attend and hear uh, the presentations from department heads reports that are requesting um, to be on the warrant uh, so that at least they can meet separately then to provide their recommendations on those requests. Um, and one of the articles for the first that I will be adding, and I should have mentioned it when the trust fund commissioners were here, were on that donation uh, that we received from the um, RV, uh, the Urban Trust. Yes, um, trust one point five million dollars that will require uh, action by town meeting to accept that donation. So. Awesome. Right now, just wanna get town meeting to accept it, and then. I'd love to keep money in the fee and then do the beautification with downtown that we rip it up. Yeah, well, the walking lights and that. what? When's that gonna be? I don't know. Yeah. We could we could we could tag it for that and not spend any money. So is do we need a motion on anything? We're good. No, because that's all gonna be on the first. Okay, beautiful. So um now I have a race application for Upton VFW for run to remember. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Okay. I move that the select board vote to approve the run to remember 5K road race as requested by VFW post 5594 to be held on Saturday, October 5th, 2024 at 9 a.m. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Although my agenda says one of two, I do believe you're done. Or am I missing something? Um. Did there I? should have been a back page, which would have been meeting minutes and then adjournment. So oh, okay. So meeting minutes. If you minutes. want to skip adjournment, yeah. just stay all night. <laughs> as much as I love everybody, no. Um, but I might sleep better here than I do at home. Who knows? Um, I reviewed the meeting minutes. There were just two very minor um, we fixed typos. We fixed them. So do I hear a motion to accept the minutes as amended? I move that the select board vote to approve the regular me meeting minutes for September 3rd, 2024. Which one was amended? The second one. No, just that this one, one the, um, the September 3rd. I second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? No, well, we, we can. can. Oh, I don't have my agenda. It's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I get lost by by page. Um, see, I'm on page 33 of 82. You know, scrolling just isn't working tonight. No, <laughs> that's why we have a. Nobody's watching us. I move that the select board vote to approve the executive uh, executive meeting minutes for August 6, 2020. I second. All in favor? Uh, I, Maureen Bunnell. <laughs> I, Laura, have you in public? It's okay. <laughs> Move that the select board vote to approve the executive meeting minutes for September 3rd, 2020. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Now, Laura. Okay. 
Do, do, I, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Because I'm very late. I'm getting goofy. We adjourn the meeting. I second. Adjourn. Uh, meeting adjourned at eight o'clock. That's a new record. Thank you.